I just always got all my skincare from my like the females in my life. I have a me. great salt scrub for you. You should get over here. <laughs> Whoa. On this episode of Spectrum, we wanted to explore the topic of masculinity. In the last couple of years, there's been intense scrutiny on masculinity in America. We traveled to Chicago and partnered with Gillette and Walgreens to bring together a group of men, including NFL star, first round pick, and former Chicago Bears football player, Kyle Long, to demonstrate that men can open up and tackle questions on topics ranging from gender roles in society, showing emotion, beauty, and even skincare. Our objective was to have an honest conversation about what it means to be a man today. This is Spectrum. Enjoy the episode. I believe sports are more masculine than the arts. Three, two, one. Three, two, one, go. All right. What's happening? Oh. <laughs> it was natural. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, now I'm curious. Yeah, I'm just I'm really curious. How am I disagreeing with the professional <laughs> NFL player on sports? Because side? some of the most quote unquote manly men in my life are musicians, actors, people that I relied on as an image of masculinity. So to say that the arts are less masculine than sports for me doesn't make sense. My mom's a cheerleading coach. I think cheerleading is a sport. I argue with her. I'll never let her know I think Chili is a sport because I think it's fun to argue with it. <laughs> but like, there's a certain amount of masculinity, like to do all those, <laughs> all right, to do the backflips and like to push the girls up in the air. So I feel like there is more masculinity that's ascribed to just sports, like than there is to more of the arts. So that's why I somewhat agree. If you put blood, sweat, and tears into something, that's kind of what creates your character. Losing, getting knocked down, getting back up. I mean, learning those kind of principles at such a young age, I think that's kind of what helps create a sense of strength that kind of helps carry you into a certain sense of masculinity and manhood as you get older. So I'm an actor. One of my recent roles was Donkey um, in Shrek the Musical. There was blood, down. there was... Mm -hmm. Yeah. God awful sweat <laughs> because <laughs> the costume. Yeah. And then the crying. Yeah. The, the oh, crying. oh, there was crying. There was crying. Talking about the physical aspect, and I really agree that there's physical on arts and in sports, but then there's that mental aspect. You talked about like failure, getting back up. Um, like even before you got that donkey role, how many people had to get the, the audition for that role? Definitely the arts um, can be right up with, their, uh, with uh, sports. Sports are an art too. So. <clears throat> Absolutely. There you go. One of the major things that um, has impacted me would be my father and how he uh, viewed like film industry, theater, because it was something that was able to connect to the human experience and it was more personal and more emotional. Locker room talk is part of being a man. Three, two, one, go. Ah. Uh, I'll start it off, because yeah. I spent a lot of time <laughs> in locker room. <laughs> you know, the, this phrase, locker room talk, has taken on a life of itself, obviously, in the, in the past years. It's been a hot button issue. And it has changed since I was a six-year-old and I said my first swear word, and my mom and dad said, Kyle, that's locker room talk. But I also think about locker room talk as like sexual in nature, too. Someone is going to say it to you. Mm -hmm. Someone's going to initiate your locker room talk. I mean, I think growing up, playing sports and all that, I think it has found its own way with this new locker room talk as of 2016. Oh. And I think that's <laughs> kind of switched to this weird sexual harassment. I think by the nature of the question, though, them asking us this, it is the people that are crossing that line that we're talking about. Is that part of it? belittling women, not even if you're belittling women, but you're, you're objectifying them, you're, you're being cruel, but you're like, ah, come on, I'm just joking around, it's a locker room. No, man, that's not what makes you a man. That's not something that should be part of that. I think men's main role in this situation is stepping forward, setting boundaries, and still having fun within the framework of those boundaries and respecting one another. As a black man, I looked at it as like barbershop talk, yeah. more so, and I just feel like it's just being a safe space for men to be able to get those ideas out. So like if it's something that's like you find extremely offensive and 
in the confines of that safe space, you, I could say it, you could say, hey, this is why I think it's offensive. And I could say, oh, I never thought about it like that without having to take that out into the world. Realistically, on the world, I don't think men have the you know, opportunity to express feelings and things like that like they can in the locker room. Like, I'm sure there's locker rooms where you've cried, where you were able to have other men confront you and say, okay, so it's okay to cry in this The same guys who make fun of you are the same guys who Yeah, make same way, you, right? yeah. yeah. And that's so it's important. that safe space. There are a lot of men out there that can operate rationally. Not everything is like about sex with us, you know what I'm saying? So I'm a Christian, uh, my father's a pastor. To me, being a man is about taking responsibility and um, accountability. Men should be the head of the household. Three, two, one, go. My grandpa was a colonel in the Vietnam War fighting for the country of Laos. And if anyone needed a tank, they would talk to him. Anyone needed anything, he was the head uh, logistics commander. And then my dad, he was like the head of a gang. So he kind of demanded respect and made, became the head of everything. And in turn, both of them were heads of our household. I feel like I have to be able to be the head of the household and have people rely on me when needed. I just feel like when it comes time for deference, most of the time women prefer to defer to men, male, or men leadership. And my dad was a primary breadwinner and then my dad got laid off. Automatically my mom became the breadwinner. And they just switched those roles. But like when it came time for decisions and stuff like that, she still deferred to him most of the time. And it's like, we didn't miss a beat as a family. And I feel like that's what she wanted. I feel like that's what most men or most women want from their men. It's better for the men to be in that position. I don't feel like a woman can't be in that position. Yeah, I'm gonna build on what you're talking about, CJ, because I feel like each one of us has a unique set of circumstances. And in your case, your dad was really smart in terms of his you know, decisions. That's why your mom probably relied on him for that stuff. And that's not to take anything away from her. But I'm over here on the disagree side because the question was, should a man be the head of the household? Verbatim, correct? Yep. Now, my response to that is, no, there is no rules for who's the head of the household. What I'm making. So I disagree with the comment. I think men can be, but it's 2020. And if I were to tell you that I'm the head of my household, I'd be lying to you. I think there's a leader within each one of us. I don't think it has to do with whether you're a man or a woman. I know in my household, there are times that my wife leads, there's times I lead. We talk about leading up, leading down. We even let our daughter lead sometimes. My role as a man and a father in my daughter's life is to be the example and to be just supportive and accepting and loving. And I want her to see by example that I'm always striving to be the best human being I can be. That's really what my role is. And uh, she's the greatest joy in my life. I have discussed skincare with other men. Three, two, one, go. I have I mean, a great salt scrub for you. You should get over here. <laughs> well, <laughs> I just always got all my skincare opin opinions from my, like the females in my life. I don't know, I just didn't, didn't want to feel like I was any less of a man. So I didn't want to talk to other men. As we all get older, our skin starts to look like that bag that's been let, left out in the sun too long. And that's why skincare recently has become a thing for me. I've talked about it a bunch with, with guys. That's how I find out about like beard oil. Mm -hmm. It wasn't exactly. my wife that said you need it. Mm -hmm. It was my buddy with a beard that said, hey, beard oil's awesome. I, I can think of a couple of friends that we talk about it pretty regularly. One of the guys was concerned about skin cancer. And if he wasn't talking to the guys about it, like, hey, what do you do? He might not have felt comfortable talking to a woman about it. So we just crack that open. We just talk about this stuff. What did you talk to the NFL player about? You know, just skincare. Skin. Oh. I'll be the first to do this, but yeah. <laughs> Damn I, I strongly agree. I think it's important to take pride in yourself and uh, have self-discipline. I really, I, it all falls under discipline for me. I'd actually branch off that too, because I view it as loving yourself. It doesn't have to be you take four hours to be able to make yourself look good and presentable, to be able to walk out the door. It'll um, provide confidence for you to be able to do whatever you want in the world. I feel like this is one of those conversations that happens during locker room talks. So it may not be like, I'm sure some of the people are gonna be surprised, like, oh, all these guys talk about skincare. But like, those are the conversations that you have in those locker room talk situations. Yeah, I think it's important to talk to guys about skincare. I mean, we live in Chicago. I mean, I'm a serious white boy. I think it's important that when you're dealing with elements, it's cold, it's freaking rough. I mean, we're in construction. It's a lot of, uh, a lot of nasty stuff out there, so yeah.
I'm fourth generation uh, bricklayers and alley craft workers unions. Uh, my, my dad, my grandpa, my great grandpa were all union representatives. And it's everything my family stands for, believes in, and is still fighting for. I think for me, being a man is, you know, standing up for people, standing up for what you believe in. I meet my father's expectations for what it means to be a man. Three, two, one, go. I'm gonna sulk myself over here now, guys. Never made it. Uh, this is a high bar. Um, I am constantly still striving, but my father has different standards than me, and I'm proud of who I am, but there's a small part of me that's just like, I wish I could hit that bar, but it's also part of me that's like, there are some parts of that bar that I'm not gonna touch. Expectations, as we all know, within the family can be very tough, and I know you've alluded to this a few times today, and I feel for you, I really do, like in my heart. I just wanna give you a huge hug because I have a dad who has unreal, whether he knows he's putting them on me or not, there's unrealistic expectations. The name on the back of my jersey, we share. The number I chose to wear was the same that he wore. Um, profession, the same. I will never be my dad because he was a world beater in his field, but I also, in the journey striving for his acceptance, I found myself proud of who I am. And that is being a man yeah. and being your own man. And like, I really, I really hope we can find you. If we have this conversation again, I really hope that we can have you at least on the somewhat because I struggle with that too. And it's a real thing. I can't think of any time in my life where my dad has ever said he's been disappointed in me. It's been nothing but encouragement. He always. He asked for my help on things now. So like, he's always telling other people how proud of me. He's like, yeah, I ran to your dad. He was telling me everything about you. So, and I, I know like, it's like a lot of people like don't even have their fathers in their life. So like, I appreciate it that much more. I love that you guys all have that, talking about what negative consequences we have as men for holding it in and for not being able to uh, voice our emotions. Um, I think that I faith my dad uh, passed away because he took his own life because he didn't he didn't express emotion. It wasn't in his definition of being a man. And so because of that, he bottled everything up to the point where I didn't know what was going on and I was the closest individual to him. And at that point, it's just mentally and physically, um, mentally, emotionally not stable and it destroys a person. No matter how manly of men, it will destroy you from the inside. Mm -hmm. One of the few things I remember before he passed, he said to me, I can't believe I'm such a tiger and I have a son and turns out to be a kitten. Um, and they're just demoralizing words that my, day, my dad would say. And those things just stick with me. Um, so I will never put myself across that line. Uh, but I'll always work to get to somewhat dis so disagree so that uh, I can feel that I got to as close as I can to his bar. It's a shame, man, because you're standing here and you're saying your words and you're standing up to it. You're a man, dude. You're a man. You should be over here. Yeah, yeah man, I see you as a tiger. Yeah. yeah. Don't, yeah. don't oh, let yeah. that. You can use my dad if you want. <laughs> I am the son of the oldest child and the only son of the oldest child, so that kind of just makes a lineage that I have to follow. And that person disappearing drops weight on my shoulders. All eyes are on me now. I take the center stage, and that made me feel like I have to be a man. I never really had the chance to be vocal about my dad. I felt safe enough to talk about it, and it was one of the first times that all these emotions that I've bottled up have finally come to light. I would tackle Kyle Long for a million dollars. Three, two, one, go. <laughs> Let's go. Come and get Kyle, it, boys. Will... Challenge accepted. Oh, okay. Come here. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Get in here, guys. Get in here. Come here. Come, here. Come, here. Right. Come on. We're forcing the girl Come on. <laughs> go work. Boy. I'm proud to be a man because of who we are right now, of evolving our thinking, of becoming more sensitive to others. My experience today was one in which I gained a lot of understanding and respect for specifically the men that were in here. We talked about tough topics, we were honest, we weren't afraid to call each other out, and I think respect was the overlying theme. For me, being a man is about knowing who I am, treating others well, and trying to follow those things every day. 
Being able to talk skincare is something that's important. It's important to take pride in yourself. I feel like a man knows who he is and is able to make others feel good about who they are.